So, open your packet. If you didn't pick one up, pick it up. It's up in front. Is it on the first page? Can you give me the page number so I can write it down? Francisco makes $12 an hour doing part-time work on Saturdays. He spends $4 on transportation to and from work. The equation y equals 12x minus 4 gives his earnings y after transportation costs for work x hours. Make a table of values for this situation. What can you tell me about x since x is representing the number of hours that he works? It's going to be what? Positive. Okay? That's for sure. It's going to be a positive number. What else can you tell me? Well, if it's positive, it's not what? It's not zero in this case. There would be no reason for him to take the transportation but not go to work. I recommend that... Since x is independent, that means you can pick whatever you want in for x. And I really recommend you pick easy numbers. Well, what's the smallest positive number? One. And I'm just going to use these. One, two, three, and four. It tells us what to do. Now, it's been a while since we talked about this property, but does anybody remember the property that says, if I know what x is, that I can replace it? What property allows me to replace it? Anybody remember the name of it? No. You use it in basketball all the time. If you take out one player and you put another player in with substitution. substitution. This is the substitution property. If I know two things are equal, I can replace it with something that it's equal to. So all we're going to do is take y equals 12 times, what am I going to put in place of x? 1 minus 4. What is 12, mi 12 times 1? Minus 4 is? So y is going to be 8. His earnings after one hour of work is what? $8. Because he spent 4. Then we're going to do what? y equals 12 times what? 2. Minus 4. 12 times 2 is? Minus 4 is? Okay. Then we're going to do y equals 12 times 3 minus 4. 36 minus 4 is? And when I go to do the next one, y equals 12 times 4 minus 4. 12 times 4 is 48. Minus 4 is 44. It's not. Remember when we talked, it, it does have a steady rate of change. But it doesn't have a constant k. Because remember, when we figured the constant of proportionality, we did y divided by x, right? So if I tried to do that, this would be 8 divided by 1, 20 divided by 2. Well, what's 8 divided by 1? What's 20 divided by 2? Is it constant? No. Although it has a steady rate of change, 
It does not have a constant of proportionality. And the reason it doesn't, if he had worked zero hours, which would be silly to work zero hours and take the transportation, what's his earning in dollars if he worked zero hours? Negative four. Did it go through the ordered pair zero, zero then? No, which is why this is non-proportional. Everybody okay? Understand what we're doing? Um, I see a pattern. It's pretty much just adding 12. It, it would be, because why? Okay. I'm taking 12 times the number of hours. It wouldn't always be adding 12, because it's possible that he could have worked an hour and a half. Then instead of adding 12, I would have added what? Six. Right? He could have worked an hour and a quarter. That's possible. This is one of those unique times where this would not have to be an integer, but it's certainly easier to work with the integers, which is why I chose them. And since x is independent, I get to pick anything I want to put in there. Everybody okay? Turn the page. Notice again, they've given me equation, y equals 2x plus 20. By the way, just by looking at the equation, I can tell it's not proportional. Can anybody tell me why? Oh, I'm said just by looking at the equation. Not looking at the table, but looking at the equation, I can tell it's not proportional. Why? Because it has the add on 20. Remember, if it's proportional, it can only be y equals kx. It can't have anything added on to it. Here I can see that it has something added to it. Everybody with me? Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to complete the table, and they did 0 for us. They plugged 0 in, they got 20. If I plug 2 in, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 20 is 24. 4 times 2 is, plus 20 is, 6 times 2 plus 20, 8 times 2 plus 20. It says plot the ordered pairs from the table and describe the shape of the graph. So if I plot 0, 20, 0, 20 would be here, 2, 24, here. 4, 28, 6, 32, and 8, 36. What can you tell me about it? It is going to make a line. That always messes me up if the power goes off. It says find the rate of change. What did I tell you that was another word for rate of change? Slope. And this was a formula I told you you should memorize. And there were a lot of people, when we talked about slope before, said, well, I can count it. And the truth of it is, is you can count slope if the units on the axis are the same. If they're not the same, you can't count it from a graph. So, if I'm looking at an ordered pair, and I want to find that slope, I'm going to let this be my x1, y1. I'm going to let this be x2 and y2. So to find the rate of change, 
24 minus 20 over 2 minus 0. 24 minus 20 is 4. 2 minus 0 is and 4 divided by 2 is 2. Okay, so we're going to find the rate of change. Did the rate stay constant? The rate of change between each point is going to stay 2. But is it a constant of proportionality? No, because it doesn't go through the origin. Step four says calculate y over x. Well, 20 divided by 0 is what? Uh-uh. Undefined. 24 divided by 2 is? Did it stay the same? Is this proportional? Now, where they asked me to analyze this, it says, would it make sense to add more points to the graph from x equals 0 to x equals 10? And connect the points with a line. Well, it says the entrance fee to the mountain theme park is $20. Visitors purchase additional tickets for $2 for rides games and food. This was the equation. Well, it is possible that I could have point a point at 1. It's possible I could have point a point at 3, 1 at 5, 1 at 7. So I could have put some more points on here. But would it make sense to connect them with a line? Can anybody tell me why it doesn't make sense to connect it with a line? No, but but we use them for time a lot. No. What could you tell me about a point that would be in this bracket right here? What's this x value right here? No, 0.5. Think about what x represents. I can't have a fraction of a ticket. ticket. <clears throat> I can't have a fraction of a ticket. That makes sense to everybody? Sometimes, even though it looks like it's going to make a straight line, it doesn't make sense to connect it with a line because we can't have a fractional part of what they're talking about. We'd be better off leaving them as dots. Everybody good with this example? Okay. I believe this is at the top of the next page. Where this equation is, y equals mx plus b, circle it, underline it, write it off in the notes on the side, write it down as many times as you have to to memorize this. y equals mx plus b. They don't tell you at this point, but you can write Somewhere next to this, this is called the slope intercept form. I'm going to 
would tell you, if you had me for algebra, they would teach you three or four different ways to write an equation for a line. I would teach you this one first, and I would teach it until everybody had it memorized and learned, and I might show you the other ones, but no matter how they give you information, whether they give you two points, whether they give you a point and a slope, or they give you the slope and the y-intercept, this form can always be used to write an equation for a line. So it becomes the most useful one. Question? Mm -hmm. I only use that one because every time I do it breaks. The other thing is when you're looking at this form, it gives me two very useful pieces of information. What did I tell you M represented? We've used it in the formula. What does M represent? Slope. Okay. Obviously, the Y and the X represent the ordered pair, the X and the Y. So what do you think this B represents? It represents an intercept. In fact, it represents this, the y-intercept. In the real world, B is always where you start. It's that initial investment, how far you are away from home when you started walking. It's the starting point, and it's going to be where it crosses that y-axis. M is the rate at which it's going to run. Change. And it's going to show whether it has a positive or a negative effect on that starting point. If I was talking about my income, would I want B to be a, uh, M to be a positive or a negative number? Positive. I'd like to see my income have a rate of change that's in a positive direction. If I was talking about my expenses, would I want M to be positive or negative? Negative. I'd like to have a negative effect on my expenses. I'd like them to keep going down. That makes sense to everybody? Anytime you see something in this form, I know it's not proportional so long as B isn't what? So long as it's not zero. Because if B was zero, this would go away, and it basically would say Y equals KX. But he did with the equation. I've given you more information about it today than what you would have needed to finish the assignment, and you're going to hear it from me again. And again, and again, this formula for an equation will never go away mathematically. If you were taking calculus 3, you'd still use this formula. You use it in statistics, you use it in geometry, you use it in algebra 2, you use it in algebra 1. It is so crucial that it's worth spending, if we had nothing left to spend time on the rest of the year, it's important that we get an understanding of this because it shows up in everything we're going to do mathematically from this point forward. Okay. <clears throat> Let's take a look at number three where it says your turn. talked about that form, y equals mx plus b. I want somebody to tell me what m is by looking at this equation. They don't ask for it, but somebody tell me what m is. There. It is a negative 2. Is my line going to be sloped up or down by looking at it? Down. In other words, it's going to start higher on the right side and it's going to be lower on the left side, as I graph it. What is B? The starting, the starting point, or what? Y 
material what? What is it here? One. Okay? Now, I know that they put this negative one in here. If I were picking values for x, and it was one of those that could be positive or negative, I usually pick negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. I pick just as many negatives as I pick positives. I try to stay with the easy numbers. Okay. If I put a negative 1 in here, it says y equals negative 2 times negative 1 plus 1. What's a negative times a negative? So this becomes 2 plus 1, which is 3. I'm going to plot that point. Negative 1, 3. Everybody okay so far? I'm going to go to the next point they gave me. y equals a negative 2 times 0 plus 1. Well, this would be 0 plus 1, which is 1. 0, 1. And I'm going to plot that point. Notice where it's crossing this y-axis. It's crossing the y-axis one unit up. Everybody see it? Okay. Now I'm going to do 1. y equals negative 2 times 1 plus 1. Negative 2 times 1 would be a negative 2. Negative 2 plus 1 would be a negative 1. So, I'm at 1. Yeah. 1 and negative 1, and I'm going to plot that point. And then last but not least, I'm going to do y equals negative 2 times 2 plus 1. This would be a negative 4 plus 1, which would be a negative 3. And I'm going to plot that point. And you should be able to see that if I put these together, these will make a what? They'll make a straight line. And if you've plotted them and it's not making a straight line, what should you do? Yeah, go back and try to figure out which one made it not straight, because these are all going to be what types of lines? Straight lines. Are we good? That's your assignment. It's not. 